So, Rich, um, we're going to have a little video. Chris is uh, going to um, demonstrate here um, uh, bonding a piece of uh, deck gear down. We have a, 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 a piece of boat that we had around the office, so which uh, Chris is going to um, put a bit of deck gear, a pad eye, I think, down on there. Um, uh, let's talk our way through this a little bit. Bit of cleaning. Yeah, so cleaning the surface initially, it tends to be quite good. He's, Chris is about to do some handy drill work in a second. So cleaning first helps not push more contaminants into the surface. So, I mean, we probably the um, don't need to go over 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 drilling too much. At, uh, um, it's probably not what we're here for, but uh, um, uh, this is probably one of the most common things that people use uh, the, the the SABA for. Um, it's just uh, just bonding some deck fittings down when they're fitting out their boat or they're adding something new to it. Um, and uh, hopefully we're going to see a couple of tricks that they use in the trade in a minute. Um, but uh, let Chris get on and drill his holes. Something you were mentioning just before, Simon. Um, this is the, another one of those applications where silicon would fail and get flushed out from underneath the fittings and you might not necessarily know about it. So, uh, yeah, it's exactly what you're referring to before. Here's a good trick, Rich. This is uh, this is one that we, we use in the trade and the boat builders use. See, Chris is using a little tiny countersink. He's not pushing too hard. It's on a composite panel and he's just put a little tiny countersink at the top of the hole. Um, now, that, that's a good trick because what happens is that quite often we're in a hurry and we want to bolt the fitting down pretty quick. So if we bolt it down too tight, we can squeeze out a lot of the sealant. And in this one, when we bolt it down, it's going to make sure it forces some of the sealant into that countersink hull and getting a really good seal around the bolt. Um, this is a it's a very simple thing. You don't have to use a countersink. You can use just an oversized drill bit, just a quick, quick, quick swizzle around with it. That's all it needs. It only needs a very, very small amount, but it's well worth doing. Um, we used to put fitting out yachts we'd put we spend three days three, three days four days putting deck gear down sometimes a week and um uh, you don't only needed one or two to leak for it to be a pain in the in, in the bottom <laughs> so mm. uh, so here's chris putting a pad eye down um and uh, and bolting it on um, we probably don't need to see chris bolting it on so i shall i shall um, speed it up a little bit there so um but we all wish we could put a bit of deck gear on that fast. But, um, that's the, cl yes. <laughs> the clearing up, the cleaning up process is one of the things that's quite important. Uh, Rich, take us through the clearing up process and 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 how Saba helps us with that. Yeah, so you, the, uh, whilst you get a um, whilst you will get a good bond with the adhesive, what Chris is doing here is he's moving away the um, moving away the remainder of the adhesive that's come out of the edge, the excess. Um, but you've what you what you also get with Saba is it, it is a lot easier to clean up than you find with some of the products that contain solvents. Um, so he's you'll see here um, what he's got is a, a a fairly standard cleaner bottle from home. What he's got inside it is just water with a little bit of washing up liquid. Uh, quite important to remember not to have a washing up liquid with any kind of citrus content in. Well, all he's done there is sprayed it over the surface and and maybe a little bit onto the cloth and what he's as he wipes around the edge we'll see a little uh, close up in a second but you'll see that it cleans up very very easily and the little bit of water and washing up liquid helps you get a really really nice finish around the edge which might not on the face of it might not seem that important but when you when you think about how many times you do this on a boat it really does help to neaten neaten the edges up i would say I know it's one of the things the manufacturers like is how fast it is to clean up and uh, and there's a bit of a, a close up. So bonding a bit of deck gear down is, is is not really rocket science, but it's the tricks that when you're doing it 10 times a day, make it a bit easier, isn't it? So uh, um, um, have we got any questions, Chris, on on, uh, on on just simply bonding some deck gear down? Um, not specifically about deck gear, but uh, one of the questions that's come in, uh, a lot of the other manufacturers do um, like the really small sort of 70 mil sized packs, um, the little sort of handy pack things. Uh, Sabo don't seem to do them. Um, why not? 
Okay, so one, one thing I one thing I didn't cover earlier in the advantage of an MS is um, you tend to find well, that the the product doesn't a lot of the polyurethanes and silicons and things like that you open the tube and it cures after one application you find that the adhesive cures into the tube you can't use it again with an MS if you leave a little bit hanging out at the end of the nozzle you can leave it for often up to well I personally left a a tube up to six months and then gone back and pulled a little bit out of the end and that's because the moisture's cured the top bit and then it can't get in any further so the little blister packs tend to be for the products that people complain about them curing all the way into the tube whereas you don't have that issue with with sabi you can have one cartridge and use it for little jobs for all the way up to its i mean the, the, the shelf life from the point of manufacture is 18 months um so yeah you, you, there's not so much need for the small packs that's actually a really good point i remember uh working on boats and um you'd have a, a tube of adhesive sealant and you'd be trying to stick a nail through the side of it because it had gone off through the nozzle so that's actually really handy but uh okay um and uh one other thing i, I was doing that in the office so i had a box of gloves close to hand but um What's the we we've all bonded fittings down and doing nuts up and stuff got got sealant all over our hands. What's the best way to get them off, Rich? Uh, the best way is just with a piece of tissue or a, or a piece of rag or something like that. Um, it it will definitely come off a lot easier that way. Just wiping it straight off. Worth remembering that um, yes, water also works, but the moisture also helps it to cure rather quickly so um yeah better to just wipe it straight off if you can but you don't need to use anything nasty to to get it off your hands um, and you will also find that it won't turn your hands a different color as you find with other products it um it, it might sit on the surface but it won't it won't go into your skin so so okay. if you so we used to you used to use with the old polyurethanes used to use white spirit and things but you used to come out with still you can see your fingerprints because it had blacks black sealant in the in, 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 in the little grooves um so you don't suggest using something like white spirit or a solvent to get it off no you you no you don't need to i mean i feel duty bound to not recommend cleaning <laughs> cleaning <the> stuff <laughs> down with all kind of uh, chemicals but yeah you, you did the wiping the excess off with with a rag and then soap and just normal soap and water and uh yeah you you won't you won't experience the same as you as you mentioned with uh, it's wonderful if you do want to see what your fingerprint is, but um, <laughs> the novelty wears off very quickly. Well, cool. Okay, let's move on.